Hi everyone, Alex here from Handy Software in part two of our series on how to set up Handy Host for a cache resolving and hosting in your environment so that you can make passive income. Uh, in our first part, we uh, built these machines. They are the Udo Bolts. We assembled them together. We have three of these now that are going to be our cache hosts. And what we're going to do today is flash the operating system and get these hosting uh, through a cache. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll show you uh, how, we, how we do all this. This is my handy host master node. Uh, it's really just a standard PC. Uh, I wanted to build something kind of flashy. You could hang on a wall. Uh, more for you guys than me. Uh, normally I'm building really ugly mining rigs. So, you know, for, for me, I thought it could be fun to build something with a bunch of LEDs and fancy stuff. But yeah, really just a standard build. I've got links in the, uh, in the description below for the spreadsheet of this whole build. All in all, it cost about $1,000. It's really just a standard motherboard, uh, four core CPU, 16 gigs of RAM, uh, 500 watt power supply, and then in this stack where normally you'd have a water cooler on this fancy build, um, instead we have six individual four terabyte disks. Because as I mentioned, handy host, uh, you can host SIA coin, um, you know, a SIA node, which basically I'm renting out all this storage and making passive income off of that. Um, and as, as I mentioned today, we're gonna be focusing on a cache. You can host many projects with this, but I'm gonna show you how to use a cache to, uh, to basically monetize your, uh, your hardware for extra income. Um, so how this all starts, uh, we need to flash the Ubuntu operating system onto a standard thumb drive. Now this is a standard 32 gig thumb drive, nothing special about it, very cheap, very old. Uh, you can get them wherever you need. Um, but all we, all we really have to do is plug this into our master node. And then what we do from here is with the handy host uh, web application, I can log in. Uh, in my case, I'm just gonna log in through my browser on my laptop and uh, we can flash Ubuntu onto this flat thumb drive and then we'll install it on all of our devices. So now I'll just guide you through all that and we'll be ready to go. We're back. Uh, this is the uh, handy host uh, main screen. Uh, it's a browser-based application, so I'm just recording this straight from my web browser. Um, and as you can see, we got three services, Sentinel, Akash, and Saya. In this case, we're going to click on a cache because that's what we're configuring right now. Uh, and we'll come to the dashboard. We can see I have uh, no configuration found, pretty clear up front, no nodes online. So we pop over to configuration and we can start our setup. Um, so in this case, we're going to build and set up some new x86 nodes. That's what our UDU bolts are. Um, so I give this a click. We can read the tutorial, kind of what we're going through now. Uh, but the big thing we're going to want to do here is auto configure our Ubuntu thumb drive utility. So I have my thumb drive plugged into the handy host master node, not here on my, uh, my uh, laptop that I'm looking at, but plug it directly into the handy host master node and then click detect USB devices. And we see I have my cruiser glide 22.3 gigs. That's what I want. You can drop down if you have more USBs plugged in, but that's the one we want. And then what we're going to do is click Create Ubuntu Auto Installer. And note that this will take five to 10 minutes. Um, what it's going to do is uh, basically uh, install like the full Ubuntu operating system uh, latest version on that thumb drive, uh, configured so that all we literally have to do when we add these new nodes is um, plug this thumb drive in, power them on, and here within the uh, handy host application, we'll get a notification telling us that you know, this node has been installed and we can move on to the next. And then once we have them all configured, then we'll go ahead and set up our cache cluster. So we'll go ahead and skip forward a little bit now uh, after this uh, installs and we'll be right back. A thumb drive has finished installing, um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and unplug it. Now the next step in our process, um, we've got our three UDU bolts here, plugged into the ethernet hub down here. Um, black wire coming in is providing internet to the hub. We've uh, also got my master node plugged into that node, as well as uh, the three Akash uh, UDU bolts themselves are plugged into the same hub. Um, so first thing I do to, to install this is pretty easy. So I'm gonna take my thumb drive and I plug it into the front side USB port on the UDU bolt. And then uh, the second thing I'm gonna do is plug in power. 
Um, and as we see, there's a there's an orange lightning bolt that just turned on on top. That means we've got power. Um, and the next thing and final thing really I have to do is hit the power button and it turns green and everything starts up. Uh, now then, within five minutes, what's going to happen is that we'll see a notification uh, back in the web application that tells us that this machine has fully installed. And at that point, I can move on to the next machine and followed by the last one until they're all finally set up. And then we'll go ahead and do the rest of the configuration. We got our notification here on the interface. We've added this a cache node with a name and an IP address successfully. And now we can go ahead and remove our USB thumb drive from this first node and we'll just go on to the next two nodes until we're finished. And at that point, we'll uh, finish the rest of this process. Uh, it looks like we finished all three nodes here. Um, they all have names, they all have IPs. I can click Done. Now the important thing, we're going to configure Kubernetes, which is, uh, you can think of it like the manager for the cluster, basically. It takes care of uh, deploying uh, whatever people want to deploy onto your servers. So we see that no cluster nodes are found, um, so let's find some. We'll fetch the list. This can take a minute. Um, it's basically just scanning the network for any machines that it sees connected. There we go. We can see, uh, you know, these are the machines directly on the uh, network. And the ones that we're going to be looking for, I mean, A, it will, uh, it will tell you the, the name and IP. You can keep those in, in your brain, but also, we see that we have a cache dash some random name um, that we set onto the node. So I can just select any of these with a cache um, prepended onto the name. Um, and, and that's all we really have to do there to uh, select our three nodes. Um, the next thing that we want to do is uh, set our provider domain. There's a, there's a note here about kind of how to do this. Because um, basically, like, uh, you need to own the domain name. So I own mine through AWS, uh, Amazon, Route 53. So I bought the, uh, you know, the domain name uh, from them, or rather rent it for $15 or so a year for pogchia.world. And then you set up a wildcard um, domain. So through Route 53, I log in and... I'm able to set up a wildcard domain, which looks basically like, you know, asterisk dot a cache pog geo world. And it redirects to my IP, which you can click on get my global IP address here. So through that, um, I can I can redirect all things that, you know, ultimately go to this uh, this subdomain to this IP address. And you can do this through. Uh, GoDaddy, Route 53, uh, noip.com is pretty easy. Um, they charge you a little bit more. It's like 20 or $30 a year, but also worth it um, if, if you don't want to go through all the trouble of you know the really technical Route 53 or things like GoDaddy. Noip makes it really easy, so you can just kind of you know, log in, set up your account, and, and it'll see your IP address, and you just set up that wildcard domain through a dropdown. So highly recommend that. Um, region name and one thing um, if you look in the marketplace tab you can see like you know where are a lot of things located at like a lot are on west coast uh, in region name and I'm just gonna set up uh, my own just for testing here um, earth dash lab zero so that way when we deploy a sample application here in a little bit I'll, I'll have my own region name and, and prefer my node when I do bidding and stuff uh, cluster name I'm just going to call it Earth Lab, and which wallet? Um, w when you start this whole service up, you'll have to create or import a wallet. Um, so I'm going to choose a wallet and just fetch them. And you can have multiples. Um, I'm going to select Earth Lab Four, which is one of my development wallets here, and I'm going to select that wallet. It pre-populates this field. And now that I have these pieces, I'm going to save my configuration. And hey, we saved it. Um, and one note uh, tells you that you need to open up some port forwarding in your router. There's a link here, a website on how to set that up. But uh, basically, you're going to want to open port 80 and between 30,000 and 32,767 to this IP address that's listed. 
Um, and what, what that does is allow the internet um, overall to talk to uh, one of your machines and your th cluster of three is going to be the load balancer. So it receives all the internet traffic to these ports and it redistributes it to any of the services sitting on the others, like the services you're renting out, right? Uh, so you're going to want to set up that port forwarding for these ports. And again, how to do it, it de really depends on your router hardware you have, whether that's you know from your cable company, internet provider, whatever. But all the major brands are covered in this how-to guide if you don't know how to do that. And then as well, um, you know, we could go ahead and click build Kubernetes cluster here. Uh, one of the things to note, we have view advanced options. We fill all this out for you. You don't need to worry about this at all. If you had like... 10 nodes you can you know if you're a super geek you can go through and uh, kind of play with these and decide you know which node do I want to be my master node or, or host etcd or you know do nothing um, you want them all to be compute nodes and then one of them hosts the ingress controller and that ingress controller again it's the one that's like your load balancer it's getting all the traffic from uh, from these ports and it's forwarding them to the rest of these three machines for whatever jobs and ports they want, but in this case we're not going to do much with that. Now that our configuration is all set in stone, we can go ahead and click Build Kubernetes Cluster. It'll give us a confirmation uh, about letting us know we're going to remove our cluster, and really it's more of an update operation, uh, especially if you're adding new nodes or things like that. And right below that, uh, it gives us all the very verbose logs uh, that Kubernetes dumps out just for sanity, sake of mind, of what is it doing? Why are the fans coming on on all my computers? Uh, so it's doing some really, uh, really long install process. And it will take about five to 10 minutes. Um, so go get a coffee, tea, water, whatever it is you do, um, and come on back and, and we'll see when it's done. All right, we're back. Uh, everything finished installing. Um, we can see that uh, in the logs at the top, uh, cluster and the installation is finished and in the logs uh, our post install did its routine and at the very bottom initialization is finished. Um, so congratulations we're all set up we have a Kubernetes cluster. Now let's pop over to our dashboard and uh, verify everything's good um, and as we can see uh, we now have metrics for our cluster um, and as well kind of uh, resource availability so that means it's talking, everything's good to go, and in the top right, notes online, three out of three. And my wallet is linked up um, with the, the value in my wallet, and we can see uh, our marketplace stats. Um, this, this account's been my testing account, so I've got, you know, things well, have been closed and you know, all that good stuff, but nothing's active. That's what we're gonna be doing next. Uh, one important note, um, it, you have to put down a deposit um, every, you know, on every job. A, when you bid on it, um, you put down 50 a cash. And, uh, you know, once that, you know, the, like you put down your bid with the deposit, let's say somebody creates a lease off of that. So you win the bid and they say, I want, you know, I want you to be my host. Um, that, that 50 a cash sits in escrow. So it's not theirs, it's just sitting there, you know, in, in, in a cash, right? Um, it's nobody, well it's yours, but it's uh, nobody can touch it until that lease is finished. So then the lease will finish and you'll get that 50 of cash back. Think of it like a deposit. So, you know, in my case, uh, what I've got 24 CPUs. Um, I'm gonna need a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of uh, cash in my account. So plan on having, you know, what, five, $600, something uh, around just to get you started. Um, uh, for just deposits alone, um, just FYI. Um, so the first thing we're going to want to do here, um, as I mentioned, this is kind of my testing machine. So I still have certificates and registrations that have been already submitted. But in your case, you know, you come in, it's a brand new machine. You're going to want to register with the blockchain and you're going to want to generate a uh, encryption certificate from a cache um, for, you know, communications uh, between you know, renters and you. Um, so we're, in your case, you won't see a check mark here and you'll see something that says create registration. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and update mine just because. And I have 12,000 in there for fees. Uh, defaults about 10,000. 
a minute ago, I was testing this and you know, 11,000 was the magic number. Um, so I'm just going to give 12,000 for fees. Um, and that's, that's uh, you know, micro a cash. So, you know, there's a million in, in one a cash. So this is, you know, one hundredth of an a cash. Um, so three cents or something. Um, and I'm also going to want to generate um, or update my server certificate. I can do these both in one step. So let's go ahead and try this out. Um, we'll submit the transaction. It'll take just a few seconds to confirm. Uh, okay, of course. Um, sometimes you'll get these. It's just a you know RPC error with the transaction. Let's try this again. Okay, and this one isn't all bad. Um, yeah, so when you see timed out waiting for the transaction to be in a block, it's going to make it into a block. Uh, we just don't know. It's right now. And blocks are every eight seconds. Um, but I'm just going to do it again for my own sanity. Hooray. So my provider and my server certificate were both updated successfully as well let's say that you know just my provider got updated and I had some kind of you know gas fees or you know that, that same message we saw um, you could then generate just your certificate here if you wanted to um, so you have that option um, so now the important part um, now that um, you know everything's all ready to go um, what we're going to want to do is uh, start up our provider now provider is kind of like an auto bidder um, on on jobs, um, so I'm going to start this up. And the important parts, I mean, you know, transaction fees. Sure, let's set them at ten thousand micro a cash. So you know, one hundredth of a, a cash, three cents. Um, and provider pricing. Um, so micro a cash per milli CPU. A milli CPU. Um, they basically divide up a single CPU into a thousand units. Um, so 1000 milli CPU is one CPU. Um, and so, you, you know, the default price on this, which seems, seems pretty standard is 10 micro cache per milli CPU. Um, so, you know, that means 10,000 uh, per CPU every eight seconds. Um, which, you know, yeah, three cents every eight seconds, not bad at all. Um, so, you know, if you're not getting a lot of, uh, you know, not winning a lot of bids, maybe you're too high, you're getting too many, maybe you're too low, but I'm just gonna set it at 10 and I'm gonna run my provider. Hooray, we have started our provider. Um, so now we can pop over to Marketplace um, and let's check on my, it will be, you know, we can see all kinds of good things in the marketplace, all the open orders. Um, I want to look at my bids and see if we've already started auto bidding on anything. I'm going to refresh my open bids again and we'll see if we got anything. Good. Okay. So fun fact, this is actually me, uh, myself. I've created a job um, just for the sake of this demo. Um, and we're going to make a Super Mario Brothers server. Um, that that will run. Um, so we've got the open bid, um, and that's good. Um, and one thing to note in our dashboard, I had 60 of cash before, but as I noted, 50 go to collateral. Um, so there's there's 50 a cash sitting in escrow at the moment. Um, so now what I'm going to do, um, I've got my terminal. And so this is basically, uh, you know, I've written some scripts here just for testing stuff out. Um, so I've already got everything wired up. I've created this deployment, which then I bid it on um, through the provider. And now I'm going to create the lease. Um, so this would be me, me saying I've selected somebody, um, you know, this this wallet, the provider, and I'm going to I've I've decided to give them my business, right? Um, so I'm going to create a lease. And I'm going to 
confirm. Yes, it's going to the right account. Excellent, so that finished. Now we've created a lease. So let's browse over um, to uh, the marketplace again. We'll pop into my leases. And we should see now in my active leases, there it is. The lease is open. The cool thing that I can do now is uh, send the manifest over. The manifest is basically my deployment. Um, so it's gonna tell my server, um, or the provider to tell the server to deploy Super Mario Brothers um, to it. So I'm gonna send the manifest. All right, and it passed. That's great. Now we're gonna get the lease status. This will take all of a minute um, for everything to deploy, but the cool thing is, is that we now see this URI, and this is where that, again, that wildcard certificate comes in handy, um, because, you know, I set a cache.pogchia.world um, as my host name, but that, um, you know, the wildcard um, on, on Route 53 at Amazon, it's basically saying that, you know, anything ahead of the cache Pogchia world, just pass it to this server, and then um, the server, the load balancer, is going to know basically that this hash before a cache pog chia dot world, um, it's going to know to go ahead and t uh, you know serve that to some some container living on one of these machines. And as we see, available is zero. We want to wait for that to be one before we can start visiting it and playing Super Mario. Now it says it's available, so I'm going to copy this URL. I'm going to pop this into my browser. It's still not quite up yet. We'll give it a second. And here we go. Super Mario Brothers up and running. And again, on a cache. So, you know, this is running on one of my machines. I'm getting paid, um, you know, 10. I think it's one tenth of a CPU, so 100 uh, milli of cash I'm making every eight seconds. Um, and you can watch that slowly start to trickle in um, in the dashboard as things go. And as well, we see I've got locked collateral. Um, I've got yeah 10 in my active account, and that'll that'll trickle up as things go. Um, but yeah, one active lease. Um, so that's that's more or less it. Um, we've done everything um, you know we, we should have needed to do to uh, build some hardware, get the software going on it, and uh, and make some money. So as always, uh, if you have any questions, drop them uh, below. Uh, we've got links to all the builds um, and components for your master nodes, um, as well as building uh, the Udo Bolt in our last video with, with all the links to get the hardware and everything going. So again, thanks for all your time, all your attention. Uh, really appreciate everything you're doing uh, helping out the decentralized marketplace. Thank you very much.